Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to start structuring some of the code we've thrown together. But first, there's something I completely forgot in the last video for some reason, and that is, I forgot to add to our notes, we need some way to control textures. So, just also put more control over textures, such as filtering, possibly formatting, who knows, just we need more ways to control the texture, because that's a problem. I shouldn't have to go into the game engine and rewrite the code to change the filtering. Anyways, let's start by creating a class for our level. So I'm going to create a new class called Level, and this is just going to be essentially a class to represent all the stuff we've already done, such as our level generation. So what's our level going to have? Well, first off, it's going to have some public void. Well, it's going to have a constructor, so I'll have some constructor. I'm not going to put anything in. Actually, I'll take some string, file name, so for the file name of the level. And I'm also going to have some public void input, public void update, and public void render. So these will just be called in the respective locations in the game and we can control the level somehow with that. As for data, I'm going to have some private mesh. I'll call it mesh, and that's going to sort of take the place of, well, what we've done here. So I'm just going to start by copying this. We're going to have some extraneous data, but that should be okay. So there we go. And it's also going to have a transform, but that should be fine. So there. And yeah, it's fine, because our level should have a transform and such, so... First off, I'm going to tab that over. I'm going to have some private bitmap level, because I am going to need to, you know, keep track of that. I am going to have my own shader for the level. So, there we go. And a private material material. And that is the data that I want to be part of the level. So, string file name. It's going to load in... Actually, you know what? I'll have two strings. One for string level name and string texture name. So level name here and texture name here. And that, I can get rid of this code, don't need that anymore. And that should be a good way of creating a level. So I also want the, the constant, so these constants there. And you could make these non-constant, but they're going to be constant for me, so I really don't care. Spot width, spot height, and spot length. Again, also constants. And again, you could also make those non-constant, but in my case, I don't care. And why am I placing my constants under my class variables? That's strange. That's not how I usually code, but hey. So, with that... I should have only one error left, and that is transform, because I don't have a transform for this for some reason, so... Arrive at transform, transform. So we, our level can be in some position, location, and scale, but I really don't care. I'm just going to have it at the default location. And with that, I'm just going to copy the render code and put it in the level. So. Really, that's all I want the level to do right now, except I can delete that code. Don't need that anymore. And I'm probably going to move these into some helper methods in a bit, but first I want to get things working. So, I'm going to delete all this code, because that's now in the level class, so just go ahead and delete that. And look at that, much nicer. And I can also get rid of, yeah, all of this data, so get rid of this, and get rid of this. So, yeah, I can just get rid of everything. Our game class, our scratch pad, is coming back to normal. But I do need to change a few things. I mean, I need to do some things, such as private private level, level, and level. I'm going to initialize for new level with level 1 dot png and wolf collection dot png and with that 
we should have level loaded that we can just go ahead and render. So let's see what happens. If I run, hey, it does the exact same thing, except now it's object-oriented and stuff, so excellent. Our level is now contained in its own level class. And whoops, sorry about that. And with that, we should be able to organize this a little bit. So I'm going to have some private methods for... First off, I'm going to make this whole thing a private method. Just private void generate level. And that's going to be based on the bitmap. I'm not going to take it in as a, a parameter. At least not this time. I'm just going to keep it as the class variable. So, yeah. And... Yeah, that should be everything. So, copy all this. Well, I'm going to cut and paste, but yeah. So now let's try... Whoops. Want all of this. Good. Yeah, see how much of this is just level generation? Yeah. So, I'm going to leave all this as is. I'm going to sort of move shader out to its own because it's not because it's different, want to emphasize that. And I'm, then I'm going to call generate level right here at the end. Now I'm going to try and simplify this a little bit. I'm going to create two helper methods. Well, I'm going to have some helper methods for this. One is going to be a private void add phase, takes in some array list of integer called indices, takes in some int start location, and some boolean direction. And what this is going to do is this, it's just going to do this code that I've been doing all over the place. It's going to add the indices at from start location, which is just going to be vertices.size when I pass it in. And here's what I'm going to do. If direction, then I'm going to do this. Else, I'm going to do it the other way. So, there we go. And that's our helper method. So, now, for example, I can change this to add face, indices, vertices.size, and true. And here, same, whoops, and here, same thing, except false. So, yeah, I'm going to just try, I'm just going to go through and replace this, so that's false, false, and true, and true. So there we go. We've made our code. Sorry about keeping my mic. So that makes our code a lot simpler. Now, let's see if there's more things we can do. I know we do the texture coordinate calculation twice. So how about this? Let's create some method for calculating texture coordinates. So here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to have some private void calc text chords, and this is going to take in some integer that I'll just call, I don't know, I'll call it, oh, I'll call it value, I don't have any good name for it. It's supposed to be, you know, like this, that, well, I guess like this, whatever this value would be, dang it, like this, whatever this value would be would be the value. So, yeah. That's going to be where it starts, and it's not going to be a void, it's going to return an int array. So, I'm going to take this, copy paste, and this is going to just going to replace this with values, or with value. And now I'm going to have int array result, which is going to be a new int array of size 4, and I'm just going to do higher, lower, higher, lower. So result 
sub 0, then 1, then 2, wait no, then 3, then 2. So there, and this is going to take in results of 0, this is going to take in results of 3. Except, for some reason this isn't working. Because I want a float array, not an array. Now if I change this to a float array result, now it should actually work. Excellent. So now, I should be able to just comment this out and say float x higher. Actually, I should have, say, float array text chords equals calc text chords sub this. Well, you get the idea. Come, come on. There we go. So, now I can have float x higher equals text chord sub zero, and etc, etc. Lower y higher, y lower. Zero, one, two, and three. And I need to comment this out now and replace it with the new method. So the new method is going to be like this. I don't need to redeclare that, so text chords equals calc text chords, except this time it's going to take in this. And now I need to reassign these because they're already declared. And wonderful. Now, I'm getting an error. Why am I getting an error? Private void. Because I didn't return result. Now if I run, I should get the same result, hopefully. And it looks like it. Looks like everything is... I thought I saw something weird going on over there. But maybe it was just my imagination. If not, I'll catch that bug and squash it later. I don't think there's an issue, though. There shouldn't be. But yeah. So now, if I delete this, then I've saved even more space in our level generation scheme. We're de I don't know about you, but I think this method's a lot more compact now. And I quite like it that way, to be quite honest. Now, if only there was some way to automate generating faces. And I think that there is. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have some private void add vert vertices. It's going to take in an array list of vertex called vertices. I'm going to have some boolean x, boolean y, and boolean z. And what these booleans are going to do is they're going to let me just select the plane that it should be added in. So I'd, if I want the x, y plane, I'd have x true, y true, and z false. If I have y, z, then y true, z true, and x false. If I want x, z, then x true, z true, y false. And if I only have one, or if I have all three, or some other invalid state, then I'm just going to have it throw an exception. Or crash the program, or do something to let you know, hey, you've screwed up. So, yeah. And I may change that later. But for now, I'm just going to do it like that. So, x, y, and z. And I'm going to have some float offset, so where to create the face in whatever the other plane is. And finally, some vector 2f. No, don't not a vector 2f. Some float array called text chords. So this may make this process right here even simpler. I don't know, I'm actually improvising that, so this may go horribly, horribly wrong. Oh well. So let's start by copying this. Add floor. This is true if x and y. Well, you know, if x and z. So if x and z, then this. We're going to want to add 
Something along these lines. Well, sort of. What I'm going to do... Ah! I may need some way to account for that. Hmm. Oh well, first off I'm going to do texture coordinates. Texture coordinates are more important. So new vector, do f, text chord sub 1, text chord sub 3. So those are the lowers. And there's the upper lower. Higher is 0. And 0. Now, y lower should be 3. Right. And y higher should be 2. There we go. Wonderful. So, that's the code if I want texture coordinates. Now, this middle value is going to be offset since this is the xy plane. Now, that only sort of leaves position. So, yeah, I need some int x and int y. So, fair enough. Int x pos, int x pos, int j pos, and whatever. I'll just do int i and int j. It's a helper method, anyways. So, there we go. If x and z, something like that. So, no. Else, if y and z, so if we're in the yz plane, and else if we're in x and y. Actually, I'm going to do x and y first, because I'm pretty sure that comes next in the list, so... Yeah. Now, ceilings, that's going to be the same. Walls, that's going to be x... You know what? Let's just test out the floor. Let's comment out the floor code. Let's try out our method. Add vertices. It's taking in vertices, i, j, x, true, false, true, because it's x, z, and text chords, right? Okay, I'm missing something. Offset. Offset of zero. And let's run, let's see what happens. It l appears to still be creating the floor properly. So I should also be able to do that with the ceiling. So an offset of spot height. And there we go. It appears the ceiling is being created correctly, so excellent. Our method is actually working, and I'm probably going to clean it up to some... Oh. Oh dear. Okay, maybe it was or wasn't working correctly. Let's try that again. So, ah, there we go, much better. So, now that we've done that, let's try fixing the walls. So, this is an XY plane, I know that, so I'll just copy and paste. And I'm just going to copy the vertex stuff from here because... Well, it's exactly the same, and I don't feel like doing it again. So. Mm, no. There. There we go. And with that, that should be the appropriate texture coordinates. Now we just need offsets. So, offset. And offset and offset and offset. Now, for J, this is going to be a little bit interesting because what I actually want is J times spot height here because, well, that's sort of what I'm going for. Here I'm going to do J plus 1 times spot height. And there. So now I should be able to generate my walls like that with x and y. So right here, gonna comment this out. Gonna say add vertices, taking in vertices, taking in 
i, i and 0, true, true, false, and what else? Okay, so it's true, true, false, uh, offset, j times spot i, or spot length, and text coordinates, j times spot length, come on. There. Now, if, if this nothing looks weird, this should be the backspace, so it seems to be working. Well, if that's the case, then I can delete this safely and do add vertices again here, except this time with an offset of j plus 1 times spot length. So, j plus 1 times spot length, and there we go. So, that's all working. Now, there's just one case we don't have accounted for. That's this one. So, I'm going to copy, and I'm going to paste. So, and again, I'm going to copy texture coordinates, because I really don't feel, or feel like doing those again. So I'm not going to. Unfortunately, there's not much I can say about that, but, eh, you know. So, now, if y and z, then offset here. So, offset. And here, I'm going to do i times spot length. And here, I'm going to do i plus 1 times o, oh, times spot height. And here I'm going to do i plus 1 again. And with that, that should be working, so let's try it. Comment this out. Comment this out. Add vertices. At 0, comma, j. Going to be passing in i times spot width, and it's going to be tr false, true, true, and same thing here except i plus 1. So let's run. And it doesn't look like anything's horrendously screwed up, so I think it's safe to say that this is working. And our level generation is now, well, it's not such a giant method of doom anymore. It's now several giant methods of doom. But overall, I'm pretty sure we've reduced the total amount. Well, maybe we haven't reduced the total amount of code, but at least we've re at least we've factored out a whole bunch of this. And actually, here I can get rid of all this now because I'm not using it, which means our generate level method is even simpler now. Yeah. And levels being generated properly. So all is good in the world. And with that, that... You know, I thought about it, and I actually really do like this way this Boolean thingy works now, so I'm going to keep it that way. Hmm. You know, should I automatically multiply the offset by the appropriate value? Because that's what I'm doing here. You know what? I'm going to do it. So, here, I'm going to change that to offset times spot height. Because, you know, everything's offset by that amount. So, offset 1. Here, offset j, offset j plus 1. And there, I'll just need to change that to j to whatever it is times spot length. So, offset times spot length. Yeah. And here, offset times spot width. So, there's that. And, well, we'll just multiply by spot width every time. And I can get rid of that now. Now I can just be i plus 1. And... 
No, now that I see that, it makes a lot more sense to have offset, you know, right there. So I'm going to rearrange it. And I'm going to get errors on every single one of my methods, but that's okay because I can just rearrange it. And there. So, yeah. And with that, that should finally have my big mesh generation system in a nice, clean, and manageable fashion. So if I run now, it's all going according to plan. And yeah. So that's just about everything I want to do here. And just two more very minor things. One, I want to move this comment up here, because, you know, the new calculation of texture coordinates is part of generating the walls. And right here, I just want to say else throw new exception. Actually, no. New. I'm just gonna have it crash. New exception. Dot. Print stack trace. System. Dot exit one. And the reason I'm gonna do this is because, frankly, this is a private method. It shouldn't be misused within the class. And if it is, something needs to be fixed. The class can't be allowed to run like that. So, I'm gonna do that. System. Dot error. Dot. Print ln. Invalid plane. Invalid plane passed to level generator. Passed in level generator. I'll say used in level generator. And with that, that's just about everything I want to do in this video. So, thank you. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time, where hopefully we'll get around to doing some physics. I am I am going to be doing a similar thing for the player, like this giant class thing, but hopefully we have enough time to start working on physics. So thank you, see you then.